गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज वीडियो लेक्चर नंबर 19 वी विल कवर द टॉपिक्स लाइक कंसीक्वेंस ऑफ स्ट्रेस हाउ स्ट्रेस इज मैनेज्ड एट द इंडिविजुअल लेवल और एट द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन लेवल व्हाट इज डिटैच्ड इन्वॉल्वमेंट एंड इफ पॉसिबल वी विल आल्सो ट्राई टू कवर व्हाट आर द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ कॉम्पिटिटिव सक्सेस सो यू वुड सी दैट यू नो वी आर फॉलोइंग अ वेरी वेरी नाइस पैटर्न in this course of uh, business ethics and csr we started with values and then we talked about the corporate ethics and then we tried to learn that uh, if there are any universal values which bind the entire humanity together we also try to understand that how organizations make themselves ethical and why is it important for organizations to uh, become places where ethics is uh, adhered to i explained to you the process of the ethical process of some companies we also uh, studied the code of ethics of at least two companies ril and hcl infotech which is in uh, noida and after that we discussed vedant where we discussed why vedant which is the upanishads bhagavad gita and brahm sutra why they are important for managers today and how could bhagavad gita become actually a reference book a guide book whenever we face any situation a complicated situation in life or a simple situation how to lead life so the, the course is flowing very nicely and then we came to the concept of knowledge worker and wisdom worker what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom how knowledge can be harnessed by wise people who should be the ceo of a company should it be a wisdom worker or a knowledge worker and are these things exclusive is it possible for a knowledge worker to develop into a wisdom worker why not and i gave you the examples and we discussed in the tutorial lectures of uh, dme so also i want to emphasize that we have this uh, this twin strategy two prong strategy of giving you video lectures so that you go through the lectures and then we come we have tutorial lectures of 2 hours and wherein a student is coming and giving a presentation and the teacher is also trying to help him answer all the questions and then we studied stress management why stress is bad very important topic uh, we will come to the uh, this final part in which uh, of stress management in which uh, if i see the curriculum uh, we have to identify the sources we will identify the sources of stress and we will discuss how stress is highly individualistic some people may feel very stressful uh, become st stressed very easily and some people seem to be enjoying stress isn't it i give you the example of mahendra singh dhoni when he soaked in stress when others are soaked in stress he appears buddha like uh, captain cool uh, some people thrive on stress some people have low threshold levels you know they start to bite their nails and you know stuff like that so the threshold level is low so if you are biting your nails doesn't it's not bad you know of course biting nails may not be good but some people you know they they give a vent to their stress by some uh, it manifests in some actions so as long as those actions are productive and they are good for you it's okay because the objective is to perform at a optimal level uh, to do your best without uh, causing any undue harm to yourself to your well being emotional health so you just saw that i had a bit of a distraction and it immediately this this distraction was a stimulus and give me it gave me a small uh, stressful situation so we will uh, uh, i will also give you an example uh, in this lecture of my own personal experience how as a young professional i found myself in a very very stressful situation you know where i was being hackled by workers and i was only 23 year old and the average age of the worker was 40 45 and i was supposed to manage a group of 100 blue collar workers and and on top of it i was not a person with a technical background so i in terms of skill sets they were vastly superior to me and i had to manage them and i had to at the end of the shift i had to fill x number of cylinders so what what happened to me during that stress how i overcame that stress because you know stress is something which is considered to be a silent killer stress is supposed to be a silent killer stressful situations are being faced by very young very young people students of course face stress they want to do well in the exam so it is very important that 
we learn to we cannot eliminate stress as i said some stress is good without the minimum level of stress it doesn't lead to alertness you're not alert you are in a sleeping stage so unless there is a stimulus slightly stressful stimulus one is not one does not perform to the optimal level i hope you will enjoy this lecture how does stress it uh, impacts people and organization stress can lead to physiological changes physiological changes in people in employees so and if it leads to any change in employees any negative change or positive change it has the potential to correspondingly impact the organization isn't it it can lead to health problem it can lead to cardiovascular uh, problems it can lead to high blood pressure it could lead to you know generally people's morale can be very down if uh, their physiological condition is not very good or if they are emotionally not feeling very fulfilled or very strong it can lead to cardiovascular changes there could be a heart issue you know uh, there could be a, a, an issue of a heartbeat running too fast so someone's heartbeat is running at 110 beats per minute all the time all the time because he is under stress so this leads to uh, very bad health conditions in medium term also not necessarily in long terms it can lead to problems in digestive system believe me it can lead to weight changes and stress can lead to diarrhea and some it can lead to nausea it can lead to dizziness it can stress can lead to stiff neck it can lead to muscle aches it can lead to you know back aches so what i say, what i am saying is it can lead to physiological problems it can lead to emotional changes it can lead to cardiovascular problems and digestive issues and what have you so all of this leads also to absenteeism what is absenteeism if people are in in a typical organization uh, employees get some leaves so there is something called a casual leave you are entitled to seven or eight casual leaves in a year so eight eight casual leaves so any any day you want you have some work and you don't want to go to office you can take casual leave you know you can write a mail or a sms or a message to your supervisor you get leave after that there are earned leave so typically if you have only if you worked for one year you get 21 days of earned leave these are the leaves when you are not uh, if you go on leave your wages are not uh, deducted even in case of casual leaves your wages are not deducted in good companies in companies which are of some size there is earned leave there is casual leave there is medical leave there could be half day medical leave but uh, stressful situation can uh, lead to a situation where people take more leaves than they are entitled to and people could just be absent on any day so this is absenteeism and absenteeism has an impact on productivity because suppose you have uh, you have 10 machines on which you work 10 lathe machines and only seven uh, workers turn up so that means three machines are lying idle so to work on that machine you have to call people another set of workers if you want if you don't want to waste time so if you call another set of workers you have to pay them what is typically known as overtime and overtime is double the wages so if your daily wage is let's say 500 rupees then you need to pay double the wage there are certain rules uh, Uh, from uh, which govern what is the rate of payment in case of overtime so absenteeism health impact i have explained to you physiological emotional cardiovascular digestive then absenteeism it can lead to absenteeism it also leads to low employee morale low employee morale and which leads to inevitably leads to conflict often time you will find at a workplace two colleagues uh, who have a slightly conflicting situation and they are in a situation which in normal course the differences can be handled very easily very amicably they get into a heated argument they get into a conflict so third is uh, first is health impact second is absenteeism third is low morale and conflict fourth is poor performance and productivity an organization where uh, there is generally there is stress it leads to poor performance and productivity fifth is employee turnover what is meant by employee turnover number of people who leave your job divided by number of strength you have divided by the strength of your organization 
employee turnover. So if you have a strength of uh, 100 IT uh, code, uh, IT software engineers and in, in, in a particular year, 30 of them leave, that means your employee turnover is, rate is very high. It is 30 by 100, which is almost like 30%. It's high. So you have to compare what is the employee, uh, what is the employee turnover in your company compared to what is the employee turnover in similar companies. So this is how I do. Uh, this is how I used to do when I was in the HR. Two companies, if all things being equal, salary, everything by and large equal, if one company sees a uh, lot more people leaving that company, that means that company has more stressful situation compared to others. If all other things are same. So, so uh, production targets are impacted. What, what is meant by production targets are impacted? Because if there is, uh, if, if, if people leave, suppose a supervisor has left and that supervisor is vital to every one supervisor manages the team of 25 or 20 workers. So once the supervisor goes away, then to fill the position of supervisor, you either you you ask another supervisor to manage these workers. So his span of control increases from 25 to 50. So if the span of control will increase, it's natural his efficiency will go down. And in the process, uh, you know, the production will go down. And if you wait, if you have to fill up the position, uh, suppose you are trying to fill that position internally, if you promote one of the workers to the position of supervisor, so that position of workers need to be filled, isn't it? And suppose you hire a supervisor from outside, then it takes time. You know, there can and, and you need to groom that person. He needs to come and get a hang of your place to understand your culture and to uh, submerge himself in that culture or try to change a culture. So production targets are impacted. That's for sure. Customer interface becomes negative if the company is very stressful. You, 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 you have seen when I was dealing with Arcom, uh, I used to have a broadband connection, Arcom broadband connection in my house. When their service engineer would come and visit me, he was always uh, scared. He was always uh, trying to defend himself. He was never cheerful. So what happens is because Arcom was on the verge of closure, it led to a great amount of uh, stress. Guys were losing jobs left, right and center and not the fault of the engineer, not the fault of the service engineer. Generally, generally if, if a company is going through a period of uncertainty, it leads to stress. Stress leads to negative handling, especially in the area of customer service. I will give you an example. Uh, when there was a Lube's company, it was, a, it was a company from South Africa, I'm forgetting the name. They had come and they had come with, you know, uh, Ravi Shastri as the brand ambassador. And the company had a short-lived tenure in India because it folded up very soon. But when it hired people, it hired people at good salaries. I remember going to, uh, I remember meeting one of their uh, sales managers in the market. It was an Agra automotive uh, market that uh, the guy was under so much stress because he had not received his uh, salary and he was trying to close a deal with his uh, distributor. And imagine instead of closing the deal with the distributor, he was almost fighting it. And he needed to close this deal in order to achieve his targets, but he was so stressful. So, uh, but this was his dealer interface and he was stressed. So similarly, in a, in a, imagine a situation in a, in a white goods showroom where the atmosphere is very stressful. Let us take physical condition is also stressful. The air conditioner is not working and the guys are there inside uh, trying to sell. Uh, it's, a, it's a washing machine. So physical stress and if the company is not doing well, if they are not getting salaries on time or if they are, if the store in charge is somebody who is not able to uh, enthuse the workers. Imagine the situation, will it not uh, have a negative bearing upon the way the salespeople, the front end salespeople interact with the customers? So this is how uh, stress impacts organization. Uh, to quickly recap, number one, health impact. Number two, absenteeism. Number three, low employee morale and conflict. Number four, low performance and productivity. Number five, employee turnover. Number six, production target impacted. And number seven, 
customer interface negative as employees are stressed. So I have given you seven, there could be more. As I promised you in the last slide that I will give you an example of uh, how stress impacted me when I as a young management trainee and then you know after one year's training I was confirmed as an operations officer how I was in a very stressful situation but before that I want to tell you there are two perspectives two perspectives one is the perspective of the company any company big company small company multinational company their concept is that unless unless there is an optimal level of stress people will not achieve anything let me give you an example of my own company, the great organization I worked for, Indian Oil Corporation. I generally found, suppose, you know, there was something, uh, there was a, uh, there was blue collared workers who work in the LPG bottling plant to fill the cylinders. And then there were officers, operations officer or assistant manager. So suppose in a shift, there were typically, if there were three operations officer and there was one shift in charge. So the stress was minimal, you know, we could, out of the three of us, one would normally be out, you know, for a cup of tea or to uh, generally have a break, have, have breakfast. And there would be two guys, then the shift in charge was also there. He was a leader or uh, a kind of a mentor to all these three operations officers. And he would intervene whenever there was a situation in the plant which needed his intervention. Otherwise, he was generally busy planning uh, the production targets for the whole month or he was looking after the transportation aspect. So from the company's perspective, it was found that even if you reduce the number of batch from three to two, or even if there were only two people, one shift in charge and one operation officer, the work output was the same. It Of course, it led to some physical stress. So what I'm trying to tell you is the perspective of the uh, company could be, you know, that if there is no stress at all, it adds to the cost, you know, and it, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, challenge you to work harder. It doesn't challenge you to take up uh, a challenging assignment. It doesn't challenge you to improve, you know, for example, if there are only two officers in the, in, in the shop floor, and one was looking after the production flow and suddenly it a, a, a LPG tanker came and you need to unload the tanker. So one would quickly go there or in the process, we one was able to develop the, uh, the, the charge men or the super or the foreman also to do some part of the officers, some part of the officers work. And in the process develop that, uh, uh, that, that level of, uh, workers to the level of leaders. So uh, you could delegate some task to the foreman, tell him how, how he could uh, weigh the tank truck. And you know, of course, uh, you can't leave it on him because uh, he may be helping you out, but eventual responsibility is yours. You are accountable for that aspect, but it generally tells you to do better. But from the employee's perspective, this is management perspective, the company employee's perspective, employees should try to avoid, they try to avoid stress, which is not unnatural. They try to avoid stress, which is not uh, unusual. And uh, it is it is best if employees, if employees try to reduce stress, how they would reduce stress is up to them. Uh, they can take it up uh, with the management they can uh, ask for additional resources or in case they need a new machine or they, new, they need uh, training. The underlying thought is that if, uh, if the employees don't realize uh, their, the, the stress, they will not be able to uh, avoid it or reduce it, reduce it. Also employees have to learn to cope with, cope with some level of stress. So I'm just trying to tell you the perspective of uh, company and the perspective of the uh, individual or the employee here. To come back to my original promise of telling you how I manage stress is that uh, and I, I will draw comparison with the uh, fight or uh, flight concept of stress, fight or flight that uh, if you are faced with a stressful situation, either you can freeze there First, you will try to 
say oh this, this is not a stress you will try to ignore it and you will try to you know try to become oblivious to it and then you will try to struggle or uh, fight it to your advantage or you will just flee from the scene so i was in this uh, lpg bottling plant and i used to have a worker who was a habitual late comer he was a i, I was uh, young i was in my 20s and this guy was in his 40s and he was a habitual late comer he will always arrive late the if the shift starts at 6 o'clock in the morning he will uh, come at 6:35 so we were we were allowed to take in people by 6:10 but we were a bit liberal we would allow them even if they came by 6:30 but we decided 6:30 is the lakshman rekha after 6:30 we will not take in people but this guy would come even later than 6:30 and uh, if i did not uh, take him in the shift so he would wait till uh, uh, 10 o'clock because 10 o'clock you could join with a half day casual leave you could come for half shift and then he will roam here and there and you know he will not look at me he will look in the sky or he will look towards his fellow workers and he will start to say abusive words very bad words expletives and uh, he would never look at me but everybody in the plant knew he was abusing me and you know the the the, the abuses in uh, rural india can be <laughs> can be quite uh, hard to digest for a young guy who's in Uh, who's in the mid 20s and who's who also has a hot blood running in his uh, blood vessels it's very difficult to uh, be in a situation when somebody is actually abusing you without looking at you so it used to give me a lot of stress i used to dread this worker i used to dread this worker ah this worker came uh, uh, if he arrived by 6:30 i was okay if he arrived after 6:30 i knew and it happened at least once a week it used to happen so what used to happen is the officer shift used to change every week and the workers shift used to change uh, every 15 days so whenever he was not in my shift i was generally happy so you can imagine how he was uh, dominating my thoughts so i was looking i was i spoke to one or two foreman i i asked a foreman foreman is a senior uh, level worker who after four men he can become uh, he can join become an officer so four men are generally you know in their limit 40s generally more educated workers if they are on a diploma or something like that of the 20 years of experience i used to i i talked to this four men he said how is this guy why he he said you know why this guy is always at me he says this guy i don't know why he picks on you he said but sir i want to tell you one thing this worker his family is very good he has a son who's in the class 7th or 8th and he always comes first always comes first in his class and you know the workers used to typically live in a in a workers colony and he says this this boy is, a, is the pride of workers colony well, idea came to my mind i said i must do something so on a sunday i went to the workers colony in my scooter with a pack of sweets and i went and knocked at the door of this worker let's call him lal mr lal so when lal opened the door you know he and he saw me there those were the times when telephones were not even the landlines were not there uh, so easily like i was staying in a officers uh, camp i we didn't have a landline connection i went to his house i said i have come to meet your son this guy was stunned and typically if you go to a workers colony and the workers are known to you and you are an officer first of all no officer had ever visited that colony it was not an official workers colony but a you know private colony so suddenly it this spread like wildfire that today that young officer has come to visit suklal he has come to visit him and he has come with a box of sweet so workers came so i went into his house and two three workers also came they greeted me and to, i told them to sit down suklal was very courteous with me in his house very courteous his wife came and she bid me namaste and i told her ma'am how are you she was very surprised a, a young officer addressing her as ma'am and i gave her a box of sweets this is for your son who always comes first and suklal was beaming from ear to ear he was very happy i said 
let me meet your son suklal he mr lal told his son to come and do pranam to his officer and the son came very smart boy and i said do you have a report card he says yes uncle i have my last year's report card he spoke to me in english he brought the report card and i found his attendance was highest 100% attendance so i called suklal as suklal sit next to me this is the report card of your son you know what is the best part of your son's report card his attendance punctuality is 100% i am very proud of this boy and i took out a 50 rupee note and i said i am your uncle i am giving you this as a prize you cannot refuse it suklal also initially he was reluctant but i said no i am like his chacha so he deserves it and he accepted it with some reluctance very fine boy very fine boy and i told suklal this uh, report card you must preserve this boy will become big one day and then i came home so next day suklal came he came late i didn't say anything i allowed him inside i took him in after two days he came late again i took him inside after around one month he started coming a bit early also you know i called him i said suklal i want to talk to you he said yes sir what do you want to say because i used to take him in he stopped abusing me i said this is your report card i had made a small notebook in which i would record his time when he entered and i had written in english today sukhpal suklal came on time today he reported at this hour today he reported this hour 5 minutes late i said this is your report card i will any day you can come at any time you want you can come late instead of 6:30 you can come at 7 i will accept you even if you come at 8 i will accept you i will take you in my shift but at the end of the month you have to get the signature of your son on this report card signature of your son this report card suklal was drenched in sweat it was a winter month and he was sweating imagine for a father to go and get the signature from his child on something in which it is written he is a habitual late comer he is a repeat offender and the officer has been to his house and the officer has blessed his son and he has said punctuality and sticking to timelines is the biggest virtue of his son what will happen if the father has to get the signature of his son believe me from that day onwards i was in that plant for 3 more years this guy never came late he never came late and this was a story which was published i it is like this it was published in pioneer it is called dad's report card i will uh, this is it was published in pioneer it's like here you know it's called dad's report card so this was my way of you know fighting stress and uh, this was my way of uh, you know overcoming stress so i didn't want to take a flight i wanted to fight it without a phys- without getting into fist cuff without getting into a physical fight and all my stress went away and then i realized that you can be in any stressful situation any stressful situation there is a way out there is a way out to that and the way out is to calmly think about this stress is causing what so if this stress is causing heartburn in me it is bad for me so either i try to change or i change this person either i try to change or i change this person so in the instance in the incident that i narrated i try to change myself a bit i try to cool myself i try to calm myself down i calm my own nerves nerves and then i thought of a very out of box way 
of trying to change trying to change the psyche of this worker his hostility towards me because i could have taken the flight also i could have taken if he, if he was coming at 6:35 or 6:40 i could have continued to take him in many officers used to follow this they used to say why have stress let the worker come even at 7 pm uh, 7 am why fight them but i thought i thought we were not being fair to the organization if the organization is paying a worker for 8 hours and if we have mutually decided that he must come he must work at least 7 and a half hours and if we don't enforce that we are being uh, disrespectful to the uh, to our own company we are violating the work culture the rules of our own company so we need to change the worker also and and we you cannot change it by fighting you cannot change it by suspending workers or reporting to them because nothing really happens an inquiry officer comes and you know it's just an exercise in futility so you need to change them so this is how i thought i could uh, fight my own stress and i hope uh, you will also draw your own lessons and if you are faced in a stressful situation you would be able to fight it thank you in this uh, video or in this slide my endeavor is to tell you my dear students as to what are what can be some of the stress management strategies or techniques for you and i to manage stress to reduce stress so that the stress does not get better of us so i have made a list of around 7 8 techniques for stress management for self these are not for organizations we will come to the organizations in the next slide first thing is first thing is we must identify know the stress what causes stress to me when i started my teaching career i used to be very stressed if the students reported late for class i used to get very upset could i change the behavior of the students i tried i could change some students could i change my own reaction to students coming late yes of course i could change so you have to identify what causes you stress what triggers it if you get stressed if you you're watching a movie and if there is a scene which is too violent and if you if you have studied the pattern if if there is violence which is shown on television or on the big screen and if that triggers stress in you you must learn to identify such causes of stress and avoid close your eyes don't see that don't see that violent scene on the big screen if it causes you discomfort identify the stress in uh, in the year 1992 1992 i was posted in jammu in the jammu division in jammu and kashmir and in the in a month of december i was asked to go and take over the depot at kargil indian oil corporation's depot at kargil and so i i planned what would happen if i go to kargil so kargil is a place where temperature at those times used to be minus minus 4 minus 5 so i needed to equip myself so that i am not in physical stress i had to also understand that i will be the only officer there so i had to carry books with me because i would not have company i also learned from my friends in the armed forces that <coughs> there was an officer colony uh, nearby and since, since indian army was my main customer there then i was able to take some information as to where i could go do they have a would they allow me if i visited the officers mess would they allow me to play table tennis there so you have to identify stress you have to have knowledge of stress identify and knowledge of stress number 2 point which i am saying is you must have physiological fitness physically you should be fit you can take up any exercise jogging swimming you can go to a gym cycle you can play games playing team game is a big way great way of reducing stress also you have to give up bad habits smoking causes stress 
it has been scientifically proven now that smoking excessive drinking causes stress alcohol some people may feel it's a stress buster but in the long run it becomes a source of stress alcohol could damage your liver you know if you don't take alcohol in a if you don't take it as a medicine but take it as a as an object which will give you excitement you need to watch your weight you know generally if you are fit if you are not overweight if you are overweight it leads to a lot of complications it causes stress third thing is so uh, knowledge about the stress physical or physiological fitness number 3 is time management you talk to people in corporate they are all the time talking of missing the deadline deadline as if if you miss the deadline <coughs> the earth would uh, the entire planet would come down crumbling <coughs> you need to manage time you need to don't let timeline dictate your destiny timelines don't first of all don't agree to a timeline which you are not in the position to meet you are a young reporter and you have to get a bite let us say from the finance minister of india and you say that you will be able to get it by end of the day today and you have no contact you have no sources you don't have a official channel to get in touch with the finance minister and you have yourself committed a timeline of end of day today this will cause you stress you're working on a project you are agreeing to a project that i will finish laying off 100 kilometers of optical fi- optic fiber cable in one month's time it's you and you don't have the resources to match it you are not sure the the cable the sourcing of cable how it will come to you it's not in your hand you have not yet identified your storage point and uh, you don't have the manpower to lay it but you have agreed to this timeline because you wanted to appear better than the competitor in terms of speedy service timeline very important number 4 which i have uh, which i think is number 4 way of managing stress situation or reducing stress is assertiveness i have read a book which is called uh, don't say yes when you want to say no don't say yes when you want to say no very often and i am personally a victim of this habit it's very hard for me to say no recently a friend called from uh, jammu and he says his daughter has joined a company in the hr department and she is supposed to present a case it's a it's a very big automotive company and sir although she's from xlri she is she cannot Uh, make a case she she is very confused can you make that case for her i have known that girl since you know since she was small she was, since she was one or two and i agreed i said i'll do it by end of the day today it caused stress why should i have agreed the the girl is a trainee she is making an earning she should talk to her supervisor and seek the help of her supervisor and if she is not up to it she should she is not up to it she could have made a case study and she could have sent it to me i would have evaluated it and sent back comments but i agreed for old time sake for the sake of friendship with her father that i will prepare the case study which has to be discussed in a workshop why did i agree to that so you should not say yes if you want to say no be slightly selfish weigh all the pros and cons see in an effort to please others are you doing injustice to your own self i have an auntie who all the time whenever i meet her she always tells me you never come and visit us you never come and visit us whereas the fact is i visit her at least 3 or 4 times or 5 times at least 3 or 4 times in a year and i take my mom and i visit her she is my aunt my aunt to has she lives with her children and they are 
more or less my age group she never visits me she hasn't visited me in 3 years time should i not turn around once or twice and say tell my aunt auntie rakesh can also help you and visit us we will be very honored and happy to have you in our house but i i can't say it she is my aunt and you know i have lot of respect and love for her but i i am being am i i am trying to what i am trying to do is i am buying peace i am buying peace but at the cost of justice i am not being just to myself so this is i have told you assertiveness so quick recap knowledge about stress physical fitness or physiological fitness time management and fourth is assertiveness the fifth point is social networking you must have you must have a social network once you come back from office your family is your first stable abode of peace and tranquility don't carry work home of course now everybody is working from home so this is a new normal but when you come home uh, talk to your, like like if you are a student you have a stressful day at college come discuss it with your parents talk to your parents na help your mom in the kitchen whether you are a boy or a girl ask your father how is his day at work ask him what does he do in the office how does he do it he will be very happy social network have friends when you have your job still maintain friendship with your college friends they will have, they will be less envious of your success less jealous of you since they are not working with you <coughs> they are not your competitors in the company you must have a social network anybody who has a good social network and by social network i don't mean the network on your twitter account of course uh, your digital network also is important it's a, it's a it's a great way of uh, uh, managing stress bursting your stress but too much of digital networking doesn't help redefine life goals plan life in advance Re- what is meant by redefining life goals as i have explained in my earlier lectures there is destiny and there is determination and there is planning and there is hard work one should keep doing a swot analysis of his own position in life right now these are my strengths i am recovering right now from a bypass surgery so should i run the marathon this year although i have committed to run the marathon this year or should i wait for 2 to 3 years should i ask my doctor if i can ever run from uh, run a marathon <coughs> i had planned that eventually i will go and settle in canada but does my health permit me to go and settle in a, a country which is very vast <coughs> very far away from my children and from my parents and a country where climate is very cold will it support my physical and mental state i may have thought of settling in canada but sh- should i do it now change of life goals plan your life <coughs> of course don't plan don't live don't live in future all the time try to live in the present also try to live in the present also because past is gone and future is yet to come and it is full of so many factors which can influence what will happen in the future live in the present also this is also a great way of relaxation of reducing stress and the final point seventh point is relaxation techniques whatever if going for a jog helps you relax go for it if going to the club and speaking to friends playing billiards you feel better go for it if you like to write a song and sing it aloud if you like to play guitar <coughs> if you like to do yoga by all means great yoga techniques to relax relaxation you must everybody must learn how to unwind how to relax and it doesn't mean going for a glass of beer huh, all the time it doesn't mean 
to go and have a cigarette. It doesn't relax. So these are the stress management strategies for self. A quick recap. Knowledge about stress. Physiological fitness. Time management. <coughs> assertiveness, which means don't say yes if you want to say no. Social networking. Redefining life goals and planning life. Relaxation techniques. Knowing one or two relaxation techniques <coughs> which suit you. So I have given you these techniques for reducing stress at a personal level. Is stress your responsibility alone? No, it's not your responsibility. It is also organization's responsibility. <coughs> your stress also, your family can help you with this. So have have talk if you if there is something which causes you stress. Have a chat with people who can help you. Have a chat with your wife, with your girlfriend, with your father, with your mother. Involve others without being in, intrusive, without invading their privacy. You know, without unki upar ladna nahi apne ko, but you know, people can help. So I thought there was these, these seven techniques will help you manage stress, reduce stress, and lead a life which is full of delight, full of happiness, full of pleasure and full of achievement. A life which you call your own life and a good life. In the last slide, uh, I discussed some of the strategies and techniques of managing stress at a personal level. The lecture will be incomplete or that part of lecture will be incomplete if we don't discuss what is known as detached involvement. Detached involvement, a very powerful word, detached involvement. What does it mean? I even call it sometimes detached attachment. Detached attachment looks like an oxymoron. How can something be detached and yet attached? What does it mean? As I explained to you in the shloka of Bhagavad Gita, Karmanne Vadika Raste Ma Faleshu Kadacha. You have control over your action. You don't have the final control over the outcome. Leave that control to the forces of destiny. Leave that control, leave that uh, final result to nature. Leave it to God or what have you. Plan your steps. Do everything right. Think, review, monitor, control. But don't be obsessed. Don't be obsessed with the result. This is what is called detached involvement. This is one of the most in things now, one of the most professional ways of uh, living a corporate life or even a personal, even your personal life is. So I have made some points which I, from various sources, which I thought I should uh, discuss with you and you should note it. You should focus on process, number one. Focus on the process. Involve yourself with the process. Process of any activity which you do, plan it, implement it with heart. Think with your mind, think with your mind, implement with a full heart. So focus on process. Number two, don't focus too much on outcome. Don't focus too much on outcome because outcome may or may not. Sometimes, many times you will feel that the outcome is not as per the desired uh, result, desired uh, goal. It's not as per what you had desired. I am reminded of uh, what Amitabh Bachchan said and what his father used to tell him ki apne man ki ho to achha aur apne man ki na ho to jyada achha. Man ki ho to achha, man ki na ho to jyada achha. What does it mean? He explained, if what happens is as per your desire, it is good. And if what happens is not as per your desire, it is even better because that is the desire of the God. In English, they say, God's will hath no why. So, don't focus on outcome. Third thing I want to say and which I have gathered from various literature, these are not my own. I have, uh, you know, I have gone through many, uh, I, have gone, I have done a literature review and that is how I was able to compile this. Don't Hurry about results. Don't rush. The, don't think that what should happen 
after 21 days don't start to think about on the 15th day this will happen whether if you are a lawyer whether my whether my client will be safe or not it's not see you have to prepare your arguments you have to uh, quote from the past judgments you have to prepare your brief very well you have to argue very well you have to make a you have to fight your case very well in the court and then you have to leave it to the judge okay so don't hurry things fourth point is do your best and let go just leave it you have already appeared in the examination of indian administrative services civil services now don't think about it think about it from the perspective of what where you could have done better that it's okay still it is still constructive but to opt to be obsessed by it ab kya hoga will i make it or i'll not make it to judicial services don't bother, don't don't occupy your mind do your best and let it go this will bring peace and harmony this will bring peace and harmony so fifth point is focus on peace and the harmony rather than just chasing the result you have to see you have to have this obsession you know you, you must have a passion but uh, also try to bring about peace and harmony sixth point which i have said is learn from nature look at bird look at birds or look at uh, look at a fish in the pond or look at uh, a, a a horse in the jungle or a giraffe in the jungle what do they do you see the bird it's always involved in the process it's always but it is never rushing things never rushing things it is making a nest at its own pace it is chirping it is flying fluttering singing collecting food and carrying that uh, food in the in in its beak and trying to drop the food from uh, her beak into the mouth of the the tiny uh, bird so uh, are they ever hurrying things they are they just learn from nature don't try to take control of everything don't try to take control don't try to be lord and master of all that you survey even if you are the captain of a ship you need to delegate you need to decentralize you need to believe in your team you need to know that when you are sleeping your second in command is in charge if you are unwell your second in command is in charge invest in them you don't own the project full project your team also owns it so this is what is meant by detached involvement and i have tried to give you some steps as to how to achieve detached involvement or detached attachment let's now discuss how do organization what are the strategies for organizations to reduce the stress within the organization so because we have discussed the personal ways how stress can be reduced so we need to discuss now how what is the role which organizations have to play in reducing the stress so first is that you know the organizations can create a stress free working stress free working environment this will be in terms of the working conditions and conditions of employment so what are working conditions is working conditions is where you go to work so is there adequate lighting is there privacy in case somebody is handling an assignment which requires that set of some some kind of a privacy suppose somebody is handling payroll section so he needs he or she needs to be at a place where people can't just peep in and you know uh, see the data which is not relevant to them or which is which involves other uh, colleagues or other employees so atmosphere should be stress free where are you situated how far are you uh, if you are very far from the habitation from where people live have you provided bus facility because you know all these things can create stress so you have to create a stress free working environment 
what is the difference between working condition and conditions of employment working conditions means you know whether the place is lit or not whether there is provision of potable drinking water or not whether there is canteen or not whether there are restrooms or not these are working conditions and uh, conditions of employment how many hours you need to work when will you retire uh, what is the system what is the uh, system of uh, reimbursement of medical expenses so this is uh, uh, the difference between the working conditions and conditions of employment after how many years are you entitled to get gratuity okay so a company has to work both the working conditions and conditions of employment they have to work on both the aspects to provide a stress uh, free working environment so good working condition is uh, of course on the top then you know companies have to design, design work give workload to people as per their capacity so there are two type of people type a and type b type a are the kind of a people who are highly competitive they are highly organized well planned meticulous in planning they are impatient they are ambitious they have a good control over time management they want things to move as per plan anything here and there they are not able to understand if something is uh, something is not as per plan they don't like it they are very status status conscious people many of them are workaholic this is type a people they are prone to job related stress there are greater chances for these people to get coronary heart diseases they are type a people there are type b people who are less stressed they seem to enjoy the game the process more than to be unduly bothered about the end results they generally are creative people if there is a if there is a problem they will they don't get stressed because of that but they are they are happy to find a creative way creative way and get to a solution of that problem so and you know there is something called i have i came across something called thomas profiling it's called a disc profile which is you know d could be dominance i is influence s is steadiness and c is compliance so as per thomas profile every individual he can be mapped for these four characteristics disc profile and every job must have a disc profile this is what the company says thomas profiling every company must have disc profiling for the job and they must do a disc profiling of the person only if these two are matching it becomes an ideal fit suppose uh, suppose uh, it is a job of an of an accountant so in case of accountant the steadiness factor and compliance factor are very they need to be high so dominance and influence factor may not be high but if for the position of an accountant you bring in somebody whose whose natural characteristic is dominance he may not fit into that mold so you have to give work as per the 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 person who is recruited to the job especially at the supervisory leadership level should be the one whose own mental makeup his emotional quotient matches with the job requirement another thing is to reduce stress the work system should be transparent it should be transparent authority and responsibility matrix must be uh, coexistent and coterminous standards uh, standard operating procedures should be defined if you are in a if you are in a manufacturing unit or you are, you are in a logistics sector there has to be a standard operating procedure that suppose suppose there is a truck tank truck which is carrying petroleum product how should it be unloaded so first the truck will come to a petrol station it will get a settling time for 30 minutes once it is settled then you will take a dipstick you will measure what is the height of the product so based upon that you will calculate how much is the product in the tank then uh, you will do the grounding of the tank truck so that in case of any static charge it does not lead to any spark then what which hose will you open first will you uh, which uh, lever will you open first or, or 
will you what kind of a hose pipe is required for a particular kind of a truck you will stop all the operations at the fuel station all the pumps which are connected to the, that underground tank where the product is supposed to go so standing operating procedure standard standard operating procedures have to be there if there are no standard operating procedures people will do carry out a process as per their own understanding as per their own estimate as per their own intuition and they may go wrong this will create stress so standard operating procedures are very important then respect for private space and personal time we all need some private space you can't if you are sitting very close if if you are if you are a if you are working on your laptop and the your sandwich between two people you can uh, feel their breath and uh, you know uh, you can hear them breathing this creates tension this creates stress so there has to be respect for privacy and there should be some personal time so somebody is somebody wants to go out for a cup of tea or somebody wants to have a lunch at this time so there should be a respect for uh, a private time and personal time there should be clearly defined goals many times if the goals are not defined it leads to stressful situation the employee does not know what are his exact goals he does not know if he achieves this goal what will he get if he doesn't achieve this communication clarity of communication is required if the communication is clear it leads to less stressful situation the environment has to be ethical so i'm giving you all these points environment has to be ethical as as we have seen we have learned that whenever a company has an ethical environment it leads to morale boosting of employees employees feel happy if they work in a company uh, which is very ethical so and in clearly defined goals you know the ro the role profile has to be clear the job description has to be very clear so if you join a company as a as a quality control inspector it has to be clearly defined you are a quality control inspector what is your scope of work does it is it limited to the plant or is it limited outside the plant so all these points have to be clear so and role profile if you are the general manager uh, hr so are you are you the one who will uh, also cover the top management including the uh, people who are occupying the board positions so what is your role profile all these things all these things can help reduce stress within an organization so we now come at the last leg of uh, unit 2 the final uh, presentations the final sheets and uh, it's called success uh, to read it success failure and principles of competitive success success failure and principles of competitive success so we should first define success isn't it but i thought that uh, instead of defining success first we should first define failure <laughs> you know what is the failure of a business a failure of a business to me is when uh, it's a situation when business ceases operations because it is not able to generate revenues even to cover its expense so if expenses to run a business let us say we are we have a we have a, a coca cola bottling plant i i run a coca cola bottling plant and to pay wages to my workers for the electricity bill for the rental of the <coughs> place where my factory is situ situated <coughs> to pay my to pay the electricity bill and what have you if and to pay for my cost of goods the raw material i am incurring <coughs> x expense this is my running expense and i am also paying to the bank the cost of capital <coughs> so i am paying a installment so x is something which i need to uh, spend to keep my operations afloat and if my income is income which i get after selling my product 
to various uh, market buyers, buyers in the market is Y. <coughs> so if X is greater than Y, then my business is not failed. But if continuously X is less than Y, then my business is uh, failing. So, but, but we have seen situations where Flipkart and <coughs> Snapdeal and all these companies, especially in the uh, e-commerce companies, they have been making losses after losses after losses after losses. General Motors, when it came to India, it, it said uh, it doesn't hope to make any profits for X number of years. <coughs> there are many companies uh, who have come and they say we will start to break even after so many years of operation. So they are not, you can't call them failures because the, that part of failure is planned. But if the failure is unplanned, suppose you are running a small grocery store and uh, your expense is X and X and your income is Y and X is greater than Y and you can only bootstrap your business. Bootstrapping means you can only pay from your own coffers. You can pay from your own pocket. You have, don't have an outside means of financing your business. Then your business is a failure. Or you have to go for loans to sustain your business and hope that the business will recover. So business failure, you know, uh, in small scale, a business failure is, it, it, it can come uh, with a, it can come rather early because no small business plans for a loss uh, in after one year or after two years. But final step is always, always take any company when the business runs out of cash. That is failure. So this is business failure. So what is success? If you are making profit, you are success, right? But that's not business success. Hope Wilson, the president of Wilson Business Growth Consultants, I came across that definition and I will read it out. Very interesting definition. Success is running a profitable firm. Success is running a profitable firm that conducts business with honesty and integrity. Makes meaningful contribution <coughs> to the communities it serves and nurtures high quality balanced lives and nurtures high quality balanced life for all employees. It's a very good definition. As business owners, we must think outside of our own doors. We must think about the potential impact that we have on those around us as well as for future generation. So Hope Wilson has completely, completely changed the definition of success from not just and a situation where you are making profits, but also where you are impacting lives, where you are making meaningful, meaningful contribution to the communities around you and you are alive of your own importance. You are alive to your role in the society, whether it is in the field of, uh, whether, it, whether it is in terms of being a good employer or a good supplier or a good marketer or a good corporate citizen in terms of your responsibilities and paying taxes to your government or in terms of being good to the community around you. So this is what is success. So the, I wanted to tell you failure first and then success because I thought that uh, that's the way we should understand it. Success is something we should always be striving for. It comes in different sizes and shapes. This is the definition of Michael Barnes. It is seen as various things from varying viewpoints, from varying viewpoints. It can often be hard to achieve, but in some ways it leaves the world a better place. What a beautiful definition. So if your business leaves a better place, it, it, it leaves world a better place, then you, you, you are successful. So success comes with responsibility. Success is not merely making cash plus or making profits. It's also about responsibility. It's about generating opportunities for others. It is about being the about well-being of people with whom you come in contact. Your own people, your own employees, your markets, even your competitors. Are you gobbling down competitors? Are you be becoming a monopoly 
and uh, thereafter you are in the business of uh, just ripping off the uh, consumers is that a success is success only material success even in business no it is not it's a very good uh, concept of success failure and principles of competitive success so from various websites i have uh, tried to piece together principles of competitive success which which means basically you are able to maintain a competitive edge which is vital for long term success you have a competitor edge and you are able to satisfy uh, the <coughs> needs of the target market of the markets that you have chosen to serve in a profitable manner and uh, at the same time following all the ethical processes all the high standards of ethics while you conduct your business which means looking after your employees looking after the environment not polluting the environment looking after the communities being a responsive responsible co co corporate citizen paying all your taxes on time most importantly sustainability the concept of sustainability is the business model is sustainable and uh, the planet remains sustainable you are not that dirty element of business which is abusing the uh, planet earth so principles of competitive success you can start with planning whatever you do you have to plan strategic plans are vital which are long term plans for the business based upon strategic plans you break them into tactical plans and yearly plans so uh, they say if you fail to plan you plan to fail then second important aspect is uh, continuous value creation cvc you need to create value and you need to create value for the final end customer you cannot be uh, you cannot have a uh, marketing myopia that you are just focused on the product you are just focused on improving the product uh, in terms of what you think is a good product without taking the feedback from the customer because value creation is there in the final analysis it has to create value for the end user to the end customer okay so uh, uh, planning and uh, value creation and then we can take uh, customer service customer service is that cutting edge which if you see the customer service of toyota worldwide it is known toyota is known for its custom high quality customer service even in india if you see the way they design their customer feedback form the amount of pain they take in taking a customer feedback after the car has been serviced is exemplary financial management how do you manage your finances uh, are you able to get low cost financing what is the debt equity ratio are you able to meet the commitment as a as a loan taker to your financial institutions are you giving the best or optimum return on the capital employed to the shareholders so financial management is also a vital parameter of success and it is a factor in success of course marketing marketing you know as you all know that it is the marketing which sets apart and we have all studied four p's of marketing whether it is uh, marketing a, a very simple product or the most sophisticated product the principles of marketing are the same they are the same which is basically keeping customer at the keeping customer at the focus i have also tried to develop a template in which uh, it's it's my own creation and i have said that for achieving success we must have a robust organizational process and i have given a chart which is planning organizing staffing directing controlling review and planning it's a it's the same as the post doc uh, template which you study in principles of management organization strategy has to be in line with the vision and mission you have to put in place the best strategy team who will strategize for you who will make long term plan for you and uh, top management focus has to be in strategy key ingredients of success are clear transparent responsible responsibility authority metrics it's very important that an organization is there 
to back up everyone and uh, to ensure that the strategy the long term strategy of the company is achieved and of course the high emphasis on ethics this is a course of uh, business ethics and csr i personally believe i believe that nothing you can't really enjoy any financial success if it is not built on the strong edifice of morality and ethics ethics is the start and ethics is the end the means are as important as important as the end so that's why i have uh, i place high emphasis on uh, ethics when i talk of success i hope you have understood the meaning of success which is which is not merely a a situation where your company or your organization is making profit but much beyond that meta physics means beyond matter so this is my uh, endeavor to be able to disseminate the information to you as to what is indeed indeed lasting success true success of business thank you